Okay. Uh, bye. <laughs>
absolutely adore. And, and since then, I've had telescopes most of my life. At various points in my time, I've uh, owned yeah, different types of things. Uh, and uh, I think my connection with the universe has been um, both a, a, a wonder and uh, and something that I've really enjoyed sharing into the public domain. I think it's a it's it's something that thrills me to bits. Not only seeing something yourself uh, in the eyepiece of a telescope or mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just a wonderful thing if you can share that with other people and I think that's what's driven my passion in astronomy is to is to um, not just have the experience for yourself mm -hmm. but also share that with as many people as you can so I, I subsequently I've run uh, in many different countries astronomy mm -hmm. outreach programs and special things to do with astronomy at various different times um, one of them, which I was talking to you about earlier, is the robotic yeah. astronomy programs. And, oh, yeah, uh, and I, I, think, Sam, I think, Sam, the most important thing uh, is your, you know, what's endearing to me is your sincerity and your passion to actually Thank think. You. So that, that is what, you know, got me. And, you know, I, I was willing to voluntarily, you know, jump and work for you, you know, at that time when, uh, when, yeah. when I started out. And, I, I you know, uh, you sort of inspired me to, you know, do this selflessly, you know, and, you know, Wonderful. educate the kids. Yeah. So thank you for nice Well, I think that um, it's it's that passion which, if you can impart that to other people, no matter how old or young they are, um, I think that's to me a, a driving force for humanity in a certain sense of the word, isn't it? It's it's what okay. makes humans beautiful and wonderful and capable. Uh, and if you can yeah. add that capability to the environment, then to me, that's that's a really, you know, that's an important thing, I think, and I really um, support that. And I'm delighted when I see people like yourself carrying, <laughs> you know, carrying the baton in a way, you know, I'll be, I'll be um, sort of... Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. but anyway, I'll be, I'll be, you know, becoming part of the cosmos again soon, you can you can carry on. <laughs> and I know you're doing such a great job too. Right? It, you know, you've done a wonderful uh, work yourself and, um, you know, it's with total respect that I've seen you um, from, you know, the, the point of the incredibly <laughs> difficult and CASA one selection process, right, turn right. that into a, um, a, a legacy in this country. And that to me is, you know, it's a it's absolutely wonderful to see that, watch that, and be part of it to a certain extent. So, you know, my my uh, <laughs> all respect. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Anyway, you know, um, we've we've gone through a lot of partnership and a lot of uh, you know uh, business partnership as well. But uh, this is your latest venture, right? It's called a universe of science, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, maybe you can uh, share with some of the viewers, uh, you know, what uh, the universe of science is about. And I just put the URL out here so people can actually visit you. uh, your, your website, right? It's a good oh. start, I suppose. I, well, I, I, I think in all in all, the universe of science website is is still uh, in someone in its embryonic phase, uh, oh, okay. and, and still needs a, a quite a lot of work done to it. But I think I think it's someone who is there. <laughs> <laughs> As it stands, it's got some nice galleries in there, and I think you'll see in the galleries that um, some of the work I've been doing recently, uh, especially in India, uh, mm -hmm. and I've um, I spent pretty much the last seven years uh, working in India um, with uh, shorter sessions in Malaysia, doing right. um, a lot of uh, public outreach programs in schools and universities and colleges, all sorts of situations. But what really was brilliant about India was the chance to do tons and tons of field astronomy programs and you'll see that in the sites and we've literally done thousands of students have um, uh, participated in programs in India that I've conducted uh, um, uh, with telescopes and uh, uh, one of the great places was the Himalaya mountains we used to go up there oh, very great. wonderful stuff it was just something I really loved um, uh, and if you go to India please go to the Himalayas and see okay. the stars from two what, and a half meters, unbelievable. How, so, how do you compare sorry, the students? So, how do you compare the students from uh, Malaysia compared to uh, the students in India? You know, that would be a interesting question. Well, you can, um, be honest, you can be honest. <laughs> yes. Well, what I'd say is that um, the the education system in India prides knowledge, and it's something ah. that is very, very um, evident in the students. Uh, I'd say also that the students are, are very, very competitive and sometimes mm. that's an advantage and sometimes I see it as a little bit of a, uh, a 
negative issue as well. Yeah. Um, but what I would say is that the students there are, are very, very well informed and very inquisitive. And I've remembered nights there where I've been surrounded by mm -hmm. 30 or 40 or more firing questions at you and um, absorbing <laughs> the knowledge. So they're, they're very excited to have that Thank opportunity you. to um, interact with somebody. And that's, um, I'd say, been always a pleasure as part of working in India. Um, it, it's it's not an easy country to work in sometimes. It has its moments. Um, uh, I, I can relate to some stories <laughs> which I won't go into now. And, but there okay, were no, no, I was no, just, just, I was just curious, you know, because you, you did spend like I think seven years. You were telling me uh, to come visit you in the Himalayas, and I said oh, I really want to go, but you know I haven't really had the chance, and now. Maybe soon or again, we, we don't know, but, you know, it, it's great yeah, to have yeah. you back in Malaysia. So uh, they are lost our gain, you know, so <laughs> I look at it that way. <laughs> uh, well, that's wonderful. But, I, well, you know, what I see uh, overall is that um, young people, it matters not what country they come have from, have this um, a vast sense of curiosity. And that's uh, whether you're in Malaysia or India or Italy or France or wherever I've done projects before mm -hmm. Australia. Um, and I think that's such a wonderful thing. And if you can um, generate mm -hmm. a, a sense of excitement that comes with that curiosity, then I think it's a very powerful tool in the kit of directing people's um, how do you say enthusiasm in good directions? And I, I'll give you one example, and it's a okay, really good ahead. example of, from the Malaysian side because this is this is. And oh, I, when, I had a young a young lady who was part of a class that I used to do in science and astronomy in Malaysia in okay. two thousand and it's about the same time two thousand six seven I think it was. Okay. Uh, and and uh, I I finished doing the classes and we lost contact for what, 14 years, I suppose, 13 years in line. But oh, I got an email just a few months ago uh, from the same girl who I knew, she was 10, 12 years old when I met her, and she had, um, uh, she wrote to me and gave me her thesis, which she had done on wow. wind surrounding black holes. It was her doctoral thesis on, wow. on um, yeah. black holes. Uh, and, and I was just so amazed by that. And um, it, it obviously means that if you, catalyze experiences then mm -hmm. that can turn into really amazing outcomes and this young lady is a very very highly recognized astronomer now and i think that was wow. just you know, that's a really sort of important yes. um, uh, outcome from doing these sort of things yeah, it does yeah, work. yeah to me also the same thing i keep telling people you know you know when i go and do uh, outreach program if i can just reach out to just one kid it will make me so happy but you know yes. we, we can we can affect more kids. You know why not? Right, all the better. So you know it's not about the numbers. It's you know that special exactly. connection that we we just uh, try yeah, to inspire inside that one. Fire. Yeah, get yeah, the fire right. burning, and and that's I right. think that that's one of the the great things that we do. Is it's just, uh, and I think it's so important. And if you can help people to uh, find their direction, then that's as far as I'm concerned, the game won. As far as I from my yeah, point of view. Right. It definitely. But just back to Universal Science quickly. Oh, yeah. is that that's right. That's right. What I do is robotic astronomy. Uh, mm -hmm. Robotic astronomy is a, a, a wondrous um, technology that uh, I think I'm very keen to try and bring further into the public domain. Yeah. And um, what I'd suggest is that let's do a little demonstration oh, yeah. now, shall right. we? Can you we wanted to share I'm, something. Right? Okay. I have to, Go ahead. to see if. The telescope is still available, but I actually had one um, cooked and ready to go. So um, okay, I'm going sure. to, I'm just going to share a screen with you. Go ahead. Uh, share a screen. And I'm not promised because sometimes the um, uh, uh, sometimes the the telescopes get taken over. I didn't actually hold a booking on it, but um, what I'm going to do is to go to a website now on um, this side here. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to show you that just yet. Here it is. Um, this is, by example, the Eye Telescope Network. Um, it's a, uh, a series of robotic telescopes that um, are available all over the world. And by the way, just to just give you a look at one of them, this is the one of the uh, bigger telescopes. Um, they have a, an amazing array of telescopes that you can actually wow. use yourself. And I actually had one set up ready to shoot some um, okay. targets. Um, I'm not sure. It's, can you see the screen now? Yes, we are. Everyone's yeah. watching the screen right now. 
Yeah, and I think uh, telescope 12. Let me just check to see if it's still yeah, 11. Oh, oh, yeah, it's still a go. Let's go. Let's take a photograph. Okay, right. so you see, I've got here uh, the Tarantula Nebula, and okay. I'm taking uh, a luminance and hydrogen alpha image, five minutes wow. apiece. I'm going to hit the acquire images now before anybody else steals the telescope because uh, it's not currently visible from the observatory. Okay, so we'll try. Oops. It was just a few moments ago. I'm sorry to oh. say. So let's let's just go to the large Mag uh, the small Mag sorry the small Magellanic cloud. In okay. fact, what we can do is we'll just see what the deep sky um, they they actually provide you with some uh, uh, objects that you can photograph. So let's have a look, and I'll just see what's available. Now there's a, quite a nice galaxy there, and. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, let's. I tell you what. Let's try. This is a. I haven't actually photographed this before, but this is a globular cluster, or mm -hmm. we could um, photograph the Ring Nebula. Uh, it's going to appear a little bit small in this image, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay. So okay. it's a five-minute image. Uh, there we go. It says run started successfully. Um, okay. So we're now actually imaging the Helix Nebula, um, and in Australia, there's a telescope that's now coming. Uh, online to my commands. Wow. And so uh, you'll see some updates coming here. Here we go. So um, now I've actually contacted that telescope and it's now, uh, you can see here, one click plane by Sam Gibbs. Uh, okay. Don't be surprised if we can't see much because this telescope has actually got a very <laughs> wide field of view and the, and the ring nebula is actually quite a small object. So it wasn't okay. ideal to take a photograph with this telescope. But let's Give it a go. Um, okay. it's, it's saying it's starting to slew to its target now. So okay. what I'd suggest is we leave it to do its work at the moment, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it will hopefully send us back an image in about 10 minutes' time from now, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. okay, so we're on with the uh, telescope network. But this is one of the things I'm doing at the Universe of Science. Um, okay. There's telescopes all over the world. There's these wonderful telescopes in the uh, United States, um, mm -hmm. some in Europe, um, some in Australia, and the one I'm using now is in Australia, and you can see T12 in use, Sam Gibbs. Uh, just mm -hmm. let me have a look at T30 as well. There we go. There's a big one. Okay, this is a half-meter telescope, and um, mm -hmm. let's see if we can get on this one. How, what time is it now there? Just let me see if we can take another uh, photograph. Uh, it's 11.17, and this guy has a – now we might be able to just – let's snip in there quickly, and we'll take a, an object. We'll take a deep sky object of the um, of the same thing. Um, so let's just uh, hang on. No, uh, worries, the, uh, just for the viewers, uh, Sam was explaining this to me just now. This is uh, robotics astronomy, right, Sam? Yes, that's correct. Yes, okay. uh, it, it sounds so it sounds so you know uh, complex, right? But and it looks you know you gotta teach uh, uh, you know kids out there who are interested you know to how to get on this software, get on this website, and so that they can also you know. Uh, get into astronomy as deep as you are, you know. Exactly, and it's it's not well. The the, the thing that I'm hoping to do is is to um, uh, open this opportunity up for everybody to, um, ah. uh, to to use the telescopes. And so the idea of now we got we'll take one on the big telescope and we'll take one on. The, I'll just do a quick image on this one. Uh, we'll do a, a, a 300 second image on this one. It's about five minutes of luminance. Um, okay. And let's, Let's just see what we get, okay? So I'm going to start that telescope going now. And we now have a half-meter telescope and a wide-field telescope, and we'll compare images after we've had a chat for a while, okay? So that, okay. One's, that one's now working for us. And this is one of the things that there's a, a huge potential for young people to actually use telescopes that you would never actually have access to normally. I'm just going to come back to the... Uh, to the live screen there now, oh, okay. um, and uh, uh, can you see me back on the screen without? There we go. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I um, got you back. So those two telescopes are working for us now. Um, they're busy taking images of deep sky objects, <laughs> um, uh, and this to me is a access to technology that I would have not even begun to imagine 15 years ago. It was um, really Amazing. the idea of accessing research grade telescopes all over the world to take images of anything you really want to take images of is terribly exciting. And I've done this with many, many students. Um, we've had a lot of fun taking some really amazing images and uh, learning how to process the images. Um, and not only 
just the artistic side of photo processing, but also the research side of looking into variable stars, um, doing um, telescopic surveys of galaxies, supernovas, near Earth objects. So my plan is just to see young people doing projects as would university students uh, mm -hmm. using some of the best machines in science and astronomy and it, it's yeah. rich with educational experience so the sooner i can get this um out in the public domain the, the better yeah but yeah. you know uh, i always think even though we have you know like you say the most uh, advanced uh, software available and you know the kind of facilities that you know you can control remotely but still right uh the best uh, way to teach is like you know Human to human, right? Face to face. And uh, which brings me, I think uh, you're having a, a trip that uh, maybe I would, I can, I'd like to promote for you. Is that fine? That uh, Because uh, the next question is actually asking uh, what is the universe of science doing for World Space Week? And uh, you have actually a field trip coming up. And that's a very Correct. special moment because we want to observe the Mars opposition, right? Yes, yes. yes yeah. It's a special, you know, uh, timing too, right? Maybe you want to explain a bit about, about your trip and it's uh, the Mars opposition for those who don't know what uh, it is actually. Very good. Um, well, well, just uh, to give you a quick outline um, uh, for those who are listening, there's that the every two years, Mars and Earth right. um, pass quite close to each other. When I say quite close, it's you know <laughs> 60 to 80 million kilometers, which is actually you know, on close, a universal yeah. scale, it's, you know, please jump basically. But uh, nonetheless, um, we use these opportunities to make good observations of planets and for amateur astronomers it's just a brilliant time to get your telescope out and one of the exciting things is doing field trips in astronomy and i love doing field trips in astronomy I've right. many 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 over the years and um <laughs> the frustration however we're having at the moment is with two things and one is that little tiny virus that you can't see which everybody is scared of and should be um we're worried yeah. about uh, that which is obviously damping our our plans a little bit but the most challenging object is the fact that clouds right i don't want clouds i don't clouds I know, I know, I know. and we yeah. and i was just trying to figure out today how are we going to do this we were actually heading up to janderbike to take uh, a campsite for the weekend now i'm thinking of reducing that to um, a local park in Kuala Lumpur because I don't oh, think okay. I want to be driving, you know, an hour uh, plus plus to uh, somewhere where we just have a look at the the rear end of clouds. It's not it's okay. not much fun. So um, I I'm actually uh, have an astronomy uh, group uh, mm -hmm. on WhatsApp and I welcome people to join that. I'll provide the information on how to join that later on. And okay. all I can say is that we're doing the best. I can. Well, I'm I'm looking at any alternative, but mm -hmm. I. Just have to tell you a little anecdote here, okay? Because in oh, 2003, sure, sure. in Malaysia, I did the Mars close approach. It was the closest approach within sort of like hundreds of thousands of years. So I thought, yes, let's do this. I had the support of the local, uh, the National Science Centre, a wonderful guy called JNF wanted to do this. And uh, the day came, the uh, opposition of Mars, um, and we set up some telescopes in a park. Uh, I can't exactly remember it was, it was a big place. Um, okay. And I had to go and find a, a connector for a cable because it was very overcast. And I thought, hang on, I better get something ready for the, you know, for the crowd. So we're going to do a live um, planets on an animated software. So I scurried off and there was about 100 people waiting, I suppose. Um, yeah. And then I was away for about 40 minutes. I found the cable. I walked up and I came up the stairs like this. And I heard this sort of murmur of people. And, and I came over the stairs and all I could see was legs everywhere. And there was probably around about... 2,000 people turned up to watch. It was just a huge crowd. And, <laughs> and and so I did this presentation and there was, you know, I was showing them Mars and everything and it was all overcast. And all of a sudden I had, you know, literally hundreds of people around me. And then somebody said, there's Mars, like this. And, and, and <laughs> in seconds, they, they, they were, all the telescopes had been sort of seconded by this huge crowd. It was wonderful. And yes, we saw Mars. It was fantastic. I see. Oh, amazing. And I was, I was, so I can only hope we can promise that perhaps this weekend. The opposition yeah, sure. itself is on the 13th. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and use any opportunity within the next 10 but, to 15 days. Yeah. But I also have a story I want to share the viewers. You know, we remember yeah. we went to Yangshan Island 
uh, in uh, China. <laughs> yeah, we, we wanted to we, we wanted to witness the the longest uh, uh, the solar eclipse in uh, in this century, right? Six minutes uh, of totality, right? So you know, uh, you know we, we had we had one guy who brought his son, right? So That's you know, when it came, it went dark, and the kid just went. Uh, only like night, Papa. Like you know, <laughs> to them it's so simple. I, I was thinking, I was like kicking myself. You know, yeah, it is like night. It was a big deal, right? <laughs> It was, it, I, I still consider that as my worst day of astronomy, without any question at all. I mean, all that way, thousands of kilometers, it was it was still fun to do, but I, it, the cloud, I mean, you, you remember it was clear the day before, and yes. the sun disappeared, and there was that thunderstorm, and that was the last we saw of the yeah. sun. For the still, you know, we, we witnessed some uh, night time, so that was... It, you know. it, <laughs> It is frustrating. So just as a little point here is this all face-to-face -face stuff is good, but what I love about robotic astronomy is if it's overcast, it doesn't matter because you don't do it. And these observatories are put in parts of the world which are perennially, you know, they're, they're, they're most of the years you have clear skies. So for me, I love field trips. I love having people's astronomy trips. But if you want to get the work done, a robotic telescope is certainly a very um, useful instrument. Um, let's just quickly go back to see. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, I'll bring it back on now. Okay. Uh, just here. find out what's happening. So we've actually got uh, an image in now. Uh, let's just see. It says okay. preview the last image. And, okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Wow. wow. Okay, I'll, give, I'll wow. give it full screen. Full screen. Can you give yeah, it? Yeah. Can you see it full screen? Yes, it's on full screen now. So that's, that's, that's a, a, a fresh image of the Ring Nebula. Um, uh, it's oh. certainly looking good tonight. And in fact, I might do some more photography of it. You can even see, I'm not sure how clearly you can see the image, but this is essentially not a very well processed image of the Ring Nebula. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, what you need to do as an astronomer is take dozens of images like this, and then you add them together and uh, composite the images to make a final image. And this is a technique being used in amateur astronomy now um, mm -hmm. to come up with some of the most amazing results in uh, that, that you could possibly imagine. Uh, uh, and I've seen images coming from amateur telescopes now, which are just breathtaking. Um, there's one <laughs> chap in Finland. Uh, he's only a young fellow. He's just bought a whole stack of new astronomy equipment. And from uh, fuzzy blobs, he's turned his astronomy into um, uh, just the most beautiful images of and galaxies. It's within range of anybody now to do this if you have the patience and time and a little bit of cash. Yes. All so right. Access to all of the universe. Absolutely brilliant. And some of the amateur astronomers are doing... Uh, brilliant things. Perhaps we should just take a look at the other photograph. Oh, yes, yes, let's go for it. The other one was because we had two two telescopes online. Yeah. So that was All the right. um, that was the big half meter telescope. Mm -hmm. um, this one is this one here, and it's finished its run too. So let's have a look and see what we got. Okay. Preview full screen, and we won't see. Oh, look at that! Wow! Oh, look at yeah! That. Wow! Wow, that's amazing. So you can see this is a much wider field of view. And mm. remember, this this is done now. This is not last week's image. It's a it's fresh from the cosmos. Um, wow. This object, I think, from memory, is about uh, over a thousand light years away from Earth. Um, it's the detritus of a dying star. Let's just go back to this one here, and you can see mm. the progenitor star in the middle there. It's probably mm -hmm. a sunlight star coming to the end of its life, and it's I ejecting see. gases out um it's a very short period we call this planetary nebula and mm -hmm. the, these gases here if you could see them in color which is a whole different ball game with these telescopes i won't go into it now um, wow. but these gases contain uh, all sorts of rich in elements like oxygen and helium and neon and sodium and you know it's it's a it's like a uh yeah, so this is the end of a star's life, and um, this is what you can do with robotic telescopes. Yeah, no wonder you, you, you're telling me you're so excited about this uh, robotic uh, uh, astronomy. You know, I was like, oh, okay, Sam's really into this. You know, now I can see yeah. why. Amazing, right? I, I think it's I think it's worthwhile, and I, I feel that um, the outcomes and especially the learning uh, outcomes are very rich. And you know, we use all sorts of amazing apps. You learn about meteorology. And you learn about time and uh, and 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 gases and 
<laughs> the evolution of stars uh, and plus the robotic and optical side. So we, we think it's a really great experience for students to, um, how do you say, support their science curriculums, That's to keep right. the science. Yeah. Yes. Now, and don't forget, it's like World Space Week, so it's a good time to promote all of this, right? Absolutely. And just while I was talking about meteorology just then, I'd, I'm just going to show you something else here, which is a site oh, I absolutely love. And in fact, can I show you some of the sites that I love? I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, okay. Let's run through that. Cool. And we'll take a short. Oh, we'll take a short break while you set it up. Here Let's we go. take a short break. Okay. And then um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take you through some of the, okay, the sure. portals of the universe that I think, you know, everybody should have a look at. See you All after right. the break. Thank you. Okay, we're back, and uh, you want me to share your your screen now again, Sam? Uh, yep. Okay. Um. Uh. Let, let's go straight into it. That was a short break. Okay. Sure. <laughs> that was a short break, right? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's let's just finish up with some of the um uh, uh the 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 websites that I often use um okay. for uh, my work, and I think some of them are really interesting. So. Um, I think this is the one that really fascinates me. I, I love this website. And can you, oh. is it full screen there now? Uh, okay, it's full screen now. Sure. Okay, you got a full screen. Now, this um, was uh, how the Earth looked today at um, just around, just to let me refresh it for you. Um, uh, this is the Earth at 12 noon today, okay? Mm -hmm. um, wow. And is it clear enough for you to see the outlines? You can see Australia yeah, yes, down there. Yes, you can see Australia down there, your hometown. Uh, here's Peninsula Malaysia just up yeah. here, okay? Um, mm -hmm. This is a midday. And one of the interesting things is you can see here there's a, a, a hurricane or typhoon um, mm -hmm. approaching um, uh, these uh, Japan, Japan and China yeah. at the moment. Korea, to, yeah. But uh, look at what you can do with this. To, uh, I think you'll be amazed. Just you want to see uh, what's going on? I'm just going to zoom in. Oh my you, God. you can see the zooming as well. Oh, but, yes, um, yes. Uh, uh, and you can see even more details. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Uh, the here we go again. Again. And, and so this is, um, uh, you can see really almost the eye wall of this hurricane or typhoon wow. here. But Yes, we can zoom in again. <laughs> How close can you go? Now, remembering this is a satellite that's 38,000 kilometers in space, and okay. we're able to use it to look directly into the eye wall of a, an approaching. Oh, it looks like a big uh, typhoon around there. It, it is a big typhoon. It's a very, very um, dangerous storm, this one. Mm -hmm. From memory, I think it's Category 4. Um, but wow. you want to see what, I can see some interesting. I love all these. There's what we call Kelvin Helmholtz waves. Just can you see those? Oh, yes, you yes, those? yes. Can you see the Kelvin Helmholtz, Helmholtz waves just down here? Fascinating. That's a, another That's right. very strange atmospheric phenomenon. But shall we zoom in on Malaysia? <laughs> okay. To look we what we've got tomorrow yeah. for your well, today, you know, for day after. Uh, well, it's today. Um, so, um, and I've actually watched eclipses on this. Uh, it's extraordinary. I've seen eclipses. Um, really? oh. the shadow of the moon passing across, but here's here we are. There's Kuala Lumpur, and you can see today it was quite a clear day in Kuala Lumpur. Um, mm -hmm. But as you can see, the the stunning detail of these images is just extraordinary. Um, and so I use this piece of software not only to get a bit of an idea of the weather in the region, but also mm -hmm. I just love seeing Earth. Uh, in this incredible detail. Um, let's just have a look at Australia just out of interest. And this is the type of um, uh, technology that's completely open to the public. Uh, and I, I think it's extraordinary that I can actually use a satellite with an image that's no more than nine minutes old to wow. um, investigate the surface of Earth um, in, in unprecedented detail. So um, you can see they had a very clear day over towards Western Australia this morning. Mm -hmm. But look at the colour of Australia. Isn't it amazing? Um, yeah. So this is one of my favourite websites. And okay. one of the reasons I use it is because the, um, the uh, how do you say, the, the telescopes that we're using in Australia are located mm -hmm. just around here. And uh -huh. uh, it allows me to see very clearly what um, is happening at the particular observation sites. Not only that, but you can see as the... Um, I'll just zoom out a little bit more and you can see the oncoming night and you mm -hmm. get some really beautiful um, effects. You can see how the earth, the shadow of earth mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. uh, if it comes across as nighttime in Australia, um, and just now it would be, if I re-corrected it and updated it, you wouldn't, you'd see a completely black disc there because of nighttime over this side of Earth. So, you know, one of the great sites, one of the very interesting place sites that I often use. Um, so you, you want to share the URL with everyone? What, what is it? Course, yeah, yeah, I'll just bring it over here. Um, I can put that in the chat engine, copy, and then um, just a minute, I'll get back to the, uh, hang on. Uh, there it is. I'll just put it in the chat box here. Control V. There it is. There. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, have we got time to go on still a little bit. Do you yes, 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 yes. Sure. Okay. Let's go to uh, some other sites which I really love, and one of them is um, this one here. This is amazing. This site. Can you see that? Okay. Yes, we can see that. And uh, uh, give you a guess as to what this is. I'm sure you can guess it now because it says it up the top here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the sun. And um, this is the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And um, I just, uh, I'm just absolutely amazed by what they do with this. Now, the wow. Solar Dynamics Observatory is um, uh, in space. It's a space-based mm -hmm. satellite and it, stares at the sun almost continuously mm -hmm. and uh, in doing so um, it takes photographs of the sun and then uploads them to a server so this is what the sun is doing now it's not wow. what the sun did last week or last month or last year this is absolutely now so this is a fresh image of the sun here and we take these images in different wavelengths of light mm -hmm. and when i say wavelengths i mean infrared um, uh, we take them in um, uh, uh, what's called normal white light, um, ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's actually even um, X-ray light, which is X-ray images. Is, uh, is X-ray is another part of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Yes, okay. so, and and by doing this, we can actually understand how wow. the sun works. And these stunning images, and there's yeah, you know, they're, they're absolutely beautiful, high definition images. You can get much. I won't do the high definition Im images just yet, but these stunning images are just wonderful. And every day it changes. There is, there's Amazing. never two days where it's like. And there's even one, this is in the X ray region here mm -hmm. now. Um, this is in uh, uh, a, a different, different wavelengths. This is in calcium, uh, which is a wavelength of light. You can see different features on the sun's surface. Mm -hmm. um, this is a combination of wavelengths here ultraviolet and wow. infrared. Um, uh, uh, and then it looks nice. yeah. it's it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Fascinating, and mm. you can see the sun is definitely a very different beast from the one that we know. Uh, yeah. and we <laughs> today. So um, you can see some active areas down here. There's some yeah. small active areas, and the one I think is interesting is this one. This is the the magnetic fields of the sun here. Okay, and you can see all of these um, uh, south and north polar regions on the sun's surface. The sun wow. is highly magnetic, and um, when we see larger activity on the sun, you can see these very large white and black regions, which indicate north and south magnetic fields. And mm -hmm. uh, that's actually the white light image of the sun. That's what we oh, see. Okay. And the final one here is called the Doppler image. And this okay. is essentially the sun's noise. This is a picture of the sun making noise. And yes, it does make a noise. And, really? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. The sun makes a very strange. It makes a noise, and there is there is in fact sites you can actually go to on the internet where you can actually listen to the noise the sun makes. Oh. And the reason it makes a noise is because there's a lot of explosions going on inside a gas at the core of the sun, and those explosions send shock waves through the sun, um, mm -hmm. and these shock waves can be seen in this image affecting mm -hmm. the actual surface of the sun or the photosphere as we call it so this is you know some of the amazing science yeah. that you can get involved with um uh, just uh, just a couple more i think are worth um looking at Faisal, are we okay? sure. yeah uh, sure sure yeah let's uh, some of my favorite apps okay oh, yeah you're going to share this uh url yeah. so that you can copy it down as well SDR up there for you i'll just put this um i'll just put that in there for you so you can see the uh the SDO site, there he goes. I'll just put all these up. Um, I love certain apps. So let's go back to um, the uh, this screen here. Okay. These are my favorite apps, okay? Um, please remember that this is uh, some of the 
and this is one I use very typically for my planning of my nighttime experiences using telescopes and Stellarium is free for oh, everybody. Yes, yes, I have this. You, you, um, you showed me the, uh, way back then, Stellarium. It, it's a super app. It's only got better and better yeah. over time. Here's a, an actual live um, image of Stellarium in operation. Uh, let me show you here. Um, I think you can probably see this. Uh, and I, I'll give them the full screen, yes. There it is there. And if I was standing um, at the telescope site in Australia, this is what I would see, okay? This is how the night sky would have looked um, uh, from the east coast of Australia if mm -hmm. I was able to uh, stand there. So I use, and you can see Mars up there now, mm -hmm. okay? Let's, can you see Mars uh, coming yeah. to opposition? And let's zoom in on Mars. Let's see what Mars looks like tonight. Here we go. Hello, okay. Mars. There it is there. And you can see the two, can you see the two moons? Mars and yeah. Phobos is just behind Mars and Deimos is just out yeah. there. And the side that, of Mars that's facing towards us, there it is there. Nice picture of Mars there. Um, uh, this is one of the, the great pieces of software. It does so many things. And oh, I yeah. use it uh, for not only public outreach, but just uh, uh, the amazing um, uh, p potential it yeah. has to uh, to show you what goes on in the night sky. So Stellarium is my... I know, sometimes thing. When, I, when I fly, I punch in the coordinates, I put in the height, and you know, I, I just compare it with what I'm looking at, and it's like, oh, wow, oh, I can see, yeah, you know, this is yeah, this, and yeah. this. It's that's just amazing. Cockpit, yeah. cockpit Stellarium. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said you should, you should take a telescope with you, a, la a lap scope. No, it, it, it shakes too much. There's a lot of vibration. So uh, we, we try yeah. it and to watch the Hades Comet, but you, you can't. It's, uh, it's difficult. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, can that idea. We need to put on a, a, a sort of free-floating platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, definitely something, yeah. Uh, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, I, I, I've tried. I've seen some people quite successfully do some photography from aircraft at night time. Oh, um, okay. it, it is possible, but uh, not very easy. I think you need a very smooth oh, yeah, it's, it's environment. Quite, quite yeah. Now, the next anyway, one I'm going to do is, yeah. is this one here, Space Engine. Um, now, if this piece of software doesn't blow your mind to pieces, then you are honestly not alive. You must be a zombie. <laughs> Space Engine is, um, to me, the Rolls Royce of um, uh, the Rolls Royce. planetarium experiences. And uh, I can't say enough about this. Um, there is the beta version, which is free. There's mm -hmm. the uh, paid for version, which costs, uh, uh, I think it's around about um, it's not expensive. I think it's about 150 ringgit. But okay. please believe me when I say that the experience you have using this is absolutely extraordinary I, I love it it's it's one of my favorite pieces of software okay it, it does a lot. i won't go into full details about it now but make no mistake about it when i say this is a very very sophisticated piece of software and it does things that few other pieces of software a bit say again sorry you gotta demonstrate something there you know well gonna, I, I, I can't. would you like to see it in operation yeah just yeah, just, just, yeah okay. because you're, you're setting it so well and i'm, I'm curious okay here we go <laughs> I, I will um, take you on an on a unparalleled journey through the... So we'll just start Space Engine here just quickly. It takes a little time to get going. Um, but no, really. uh, um, just uh, give me a part of the universe you'd like to investigate, Boris. Uh, Where a would part you like of the universe? To go? I'd like to go to Venus, actually. Uh, check out Venus. the clouds. They, they, they found some uh, life forms on the clouds. Recently. Exactly. Uh, right. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, um, yeah. So you want Venus and Venus we shall go to. Yeah, well, I'm going to check. Yeah. Um, I'm going to investigate. Is it true? <laughs> uh, this, this is actually an exoplanet that we're here, and you can see here. Um, this okay. piece of software is so sophisticated that it creates um, possible or potential planetary systems um, around uh, other stars. So this mm -hmm. is one of the, the extraordinary things it does, and you can actually investigate planets in other parts of the uh, the galaxy but you um wanted venus and venus you shall have here it is where do you go wow there is some sound coming through i don't know whether you can hear that or not but um okay venus so off we go to venus oh that's amazing okay here's the planet venus now the thing about this guys is that mm -hmm. what it does is we um know that venus is covered in thick cloud that's right okay 
Uh, and that cloud is um, uh, uh, made up of uh, mainly uh, carbon dioxide and, and, mm -hmm. and acids. But with this piece of software, if you want to see what's, if you want to see what's on the planetary surface, then we turn off the atmosphere and okay. we turn off the clouds, and there is Venus's surface. And really? It's actually, a real map of Venus's surface in high definition. So you can see here um, the actual surface features which mm -hmm. were mapped by the Magellan space probe. Yeah, the Magellan, yeah, that's in right. orbit around Venus several decades ago. So um, it just shows you what an extraordinary uh, capacity this software has. Um, Amazing. It really is quite remarkable. Let's let's just go and check out the Orion Nebula. I can see that over there. Okay, let's okay, just see what sure. the Orion Nebula's got in store for us. So it's got all the nebulas in there as well. I'll turn Venus's clouds back on. There we okay. go. Give them back the clouds. <laughs> and hello. Next, off we go through space, and uh, we can see the Orion, um, the Orion Nebula clouds here, and the Horsehead Nebula down there as well. But here mm -hmm. we've oh, we went a bit too far then. <laughs> we'll just okay. to, on, I'll just go back to the Orion Nebula, but um, okay. just for your um, sake, there we are. We've just uh, come into orbit around a star that's very, very far from us. I'll just mm -hmm. do the Orion Nebula here. Hang on. Uh, Ryan Nebula it should uh, tell us there. Okay, and we're going to flip around. It's not that far away, and here it is here. So you can see here. This is um, uh, a three-dimensional um, ah. image of the Ryan Nebula, and you can uh, fl fly through it or around it. But mm -hmm. um, certainly something that I never thought possible uh, to be able yeah. to do in a piece of planetary software. And down here, you can see the. The trapezium of stars in the center here, uh, truly remarkable. We we'll pop That's out right. the other side, and somewhere down here is the Horsehead Nebula and the mm -hmm. Flame Nebula down there. And uh, which other, which planet shall we finish with today? Oh, let's let's go to the dwarf planet of Pluto, right? Let's go to Saturn. Saturn's always oh, nice. Oh, Saturn. Okay, I thought I wanted to see what Pluto looks like yeah, because you know, right? now, because look at the it's volume. Kinda... Okay, here we go. Saturn and the Saturnian system. So let's head back into Saturn. Uh, there it is, the beautiful planet Saturn, and um, as you can wow. see, it's, uh, it, it, it's truly a remarkable piece of software. Uh, it, it's, nice. it's something that I have um, uh, enjoyed using, uh, and uh, I recommend it highly to anybody who's um, got an interest in space and who'd like to cruise around uh, the, um, <laughs> the cosmos, uh, searching for planets with life, searching for extraterrestrial planets. <laughs> uh, extra solar planets, um, exploring moons. Uh, it really is a remarkable piece of software. All right, amazing. So you know, we'll we'll, we'll take a, a short break, and we'll because you have a lot of comments. Uh, we will go through some of them. We, I, I don't think oh, it's possible. Really? To do all. People out there in in, uh, in yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, because we're coming up to the hour as well. So you know, we take we we'll, we'll be back after this short break, and uh, we'll answer okay, some good, comments. Good. All right, see you, we'll, see you. We'll see you guys. All right, and we're back, and you know, uh, wow, th thank you so much, Sam. You know, I I've learned so much as, as usual from you, and you know, always inspiring me. And and uh, let's let's just look at some of the uh, a lot of people are just saying hello, and uh, someone here, maybe you might know. I just put up here. It says uh, it's from uh, William oh, Chin. Yeah. Says, you oh, look like yeah. the same as when I met yeah, you 17 yeah. years ago. Wow. Nice to see you, William. I, I remember William's first photographs of Mars, and 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 I, what I saw recently from William just knocked my socks off. It was great, uh, uh, William. You've come a long way. Uh, I, I'm full of respect for what you've done in astronomy. Um, you, I know you've worked very, very hard to to improve your work, and I'm really looking forward to seeing William again soon uh, and and having a look at some of his latest images. It was uh, yeah. fantastic. Very nice to see you, William. Great. Good to have you yeah. aboard. Yes, yeah. and uh, we have one message. Uh, everybody's saying, wow, cool. Okay, we have one uh, from the Air Scouts. It says, oh, uh, so basically everyone can access without a telescope. Oh, yeah. It, it, That's this good. A robotics uh, uh, telescope that you are mentioning? Yes. The yeah, software? It's a very important comment being made because I think 
the the thing is that buying a telescope and learning how to use it is a it's a, it's a bit of an odyssey for lots of people, and especially overcoming the expense point of you know uh, the outlay for a, mm -hmm. even a, a a sort of semi decent telescope can run mm -hmm. into thousands of ringgit, um, and you can only really get good astronomy from a telescope using a camera these days. And I can't um, uh, emphasize enough how amazing the camera work is with astronomy now for amateur astronomers. So what we're trying to do is to um, give people access to telescopes at a far reduced rate and not just any old telescope. It's the best telescopes that um, are on the market at the moment. The very, the very finest equipment is available for you to use and there is a, a, a learning process involved in that and I think that um, all we do is exactly what you do as an anim amateur astronomer except you can use a laptop and you don't have to stand on a cold mountain at night time freezing your fingers off as I have often done um, you can all do it on the uh, with a, with a, 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 a comfortable room with a cup of tea exactly. <laughs> all right Still good to get out there and do the field trips. Still right. nice. Love it. Yeah. Thank so you. This is uh, quite an interesting question, Sam. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, he says here, uh, it's from Hazel. He says a question from our daughter, uh, uh, Leila. How big is space? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, well, um, <laughs> I know that's, uh, well, I think from, from last, uh, I mean, to answer that question sensibly, I mean, there's a wonderful line from a book I used to. Um, uh, uh, read with uh, Douglas Adams uh, and uh, his books. Um, uh, he he uh, made a very funny comment when his books is you know space is just stupidly ridiculously large and and it is. Um, uh, and the, the the thing was that I think we've it, it we've measured the the size of the universe. It's a roundabout from memory about 98 billion light years across now please don't quote me on that I, okay, I'm no not exactly sure. but it's very hard to define how big space is because we don't actually know the shape of the universe properly yet yeah, and yeah. It, it's something that we're we're still struggling with and inside that big space there's things that we still haven't even discovered yet so just think about this all the baryonic matter, that means the stuff that you and me and the stars are made of, accounts for a very small percentage of what the universe is actually made from. So we are baryonic matter, and that baryonic matter is approximately 10% of the universe's total mass. The rest of it is dark energy and dark matter, <laughs> and that yeah. is what defines the big space. There's over 80% of the universe, we can't even see it. And inside that big space is stuff that we haven't even found yet. So space, yes, it's very big, and there's still a lot more we need to find out to, to sort right. of understand how big space is. But please don't try and go to the nearest <laughs> star anytime soon because it'll take you 71,000 years in a regular spacecraft. That's how big space is. One light year at 9 trillion kilometers, 9.9 .9 trillion kilometers, Yes, huge distances. So, you know, even in the solar system, um, to get to a planet like Jupiter will take a spacecraft several years. Yes. To get That's to Pluto, right. it took nine years. So, yeah, big. Yeah. <laughs> huge. No, just uh, talking about that, yeah. the, the, the question, because I think, because I said uh, Pluto, I know it's a dwarf planet, but somebody asked, uh, is Pluto still classified as a planet, you know? Uh, Poor old Pluto. I mean, I mean... Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I usually get a little uh, Pluto. <laughs> Pluto. Me too, me too. <laughs> we, we loved Pluto. I mean, its discovery was so exciting and, yeah. um, uh, and, and it was a, it was a, a history making event. Um, uh, when Pluto was first discovered, it was proposed that there was a planet out there and lots and lots of people went, spent lots and lots of time looking for it. So when, Pluto was first discovered, it was naturally assigned a planet's status. Now, I always answer this question in this way because a lot of people ask this question, is that no, Pluto is not classified as a planet. It is classified as a dwarf planet. And this is a very important thing in science because 
in science, we want precision. We want to understand exactly. exactly what's going on. And if we don't understand exactly what's going on, then the truth is not before us. And I always liken Pluto to the difference between a moth and a butterfly. Okay. Okay. A moth. And a butterfly essentially are insects with six legs and wings and antennas and all that sort of stuff. But they are classified. One is classified as a moth and the other is classified as a butterfly because science allows us to do that. They are actually two different species. And it's the same with Pluto. It's a different species. It's a different planet. No, sorry, a different dwarf planet. <laughs> That's and right. One of the reasons <laughs> uh, is because... Um, its orbit is very uh, elliptical. Uh, its orbit is very tilted uh, on the plane of the ecliptic in the solar system. It's uh, not much. It's not much bigger than the moon, so it's only very small. But the fascinating thing about Pluto, which sort of puts the planet argument back on the table, is it has an atmosphere and it has active geology, uh, geology going on the surface. When we passed Pluto with the New Horizons spacecraft, it was jaw-dropping stuff. Make no <laughs> mistake, about Pluto is a very, very fascinating world. It's not just a, a rocky lump with lots of craters. It's a, it's a vastly interesting place which we're still learning about. So, yes, it's a classified as a dwarf planet. Thank you, Umu. Very good question. Okay, and we, uh, we have too many questions. We'll just take a last one here, Sam. Uh, yes. ah, Lorna. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Lorna. Hello. Yeah. We have some questions. Uh, Malachi says, uh, could a black hole swallow the sun? Wow. And uh, where <laughs> is the closest black hole to us? Oh, okay. That's a good it, question. Okay. Yeah, um, interesting. Uh, I'm sure. Yes. Well, we, we've actually been watching. Sorry, uh, Faiz. Uh, we've actually no, been watching. Okay. You, should, you should answer this. You should answer this. Good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good question. And black holes are always fascinating for objects uh, for um, uh, for everybody. I mean, it's, it, they're very enigmatic and certainly very dangerous objects. Um, you don't want a black hole in your backyard, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> we actually made little black holes here on Earth. You know, we made them in the Large Hadron Collider where we smash particles together at incredible speeds and energies. And you actually create a little singularity in there for a very short period of time, which collapses. So, in fact, the nearest black holes we are uh, associated with are actually uh, in um, Geneva. Oh, okay. <laughs> they only last a billion <laughs> seconds and poof, they're gone. But um, on the scale of um, black holes uh, on the galactic scale, the nearest supermassive black hole is uh, situated to four million stellar mass black hole, which is situated at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And we've been watching this black hole for many, many years. And yes, it's eating gas and stars. And this is what black holes do. So if our sun was unlucky enough to be in the vicinity of a black hole, there is every possibility that it would be literally pulled to pieces by the enormous gravitational fields that exist around these incredibly um, extraordinary objects. And um, some of the material from the sun would fall into the black hole beyond the event horizon, increasing the mass of the black hole. Some of that material would remain in orbit around the black hole as a brightly shining disk of superheated material. And that's the the disk that we saw in that amazing photograph that came out earlier this year. I think it was, sorry, late last year, if I remember rightly, of, the, of that funny-looking donut, um, which is, okay. in fact, superheated material. It's surrounding the black hole, swirling around. Some of that material fall in, disappears from the universe completely. Some of that material we actually photographed. Um, yeah. So... The actual nearest black hole to us, I couldn't answer that question. There's yeah. probably one closer to us, but we they're very hard to find, very yeah. difficult to find. Yep. I think now because also, you know, I just wanted to highlight dark, dark matter is, uh, you know, widely researched now, you know, it's, it's something that fascinates, yeah. uh, you know, uh, academicians now. So, you know, it's, it, it is an interesting subject and, you know, uh, we unfortunately, we, we, we were ran out of time and, you know, it's uh, one more now. I'm sure, sure you know people love to get in touch with you, Sam. So I put in down your your website. They can thank you very um, much. Email to Sam. Uh, you know, I can check out uh, some of his uh, courses and classes, his expeditions and his uh, field Please. trips. 
So, you know, Sam, uh, from me, from Asterix, you know, you've always uh, been a good friend and, you know, I always learn something new all the time from you. And I'd like to thank you for, for being our guest today. It's been a and pleasure. Anything to, to, the, to our viewers tonight before we go? Yeah, well, all I want to say is you, um, uh, a thank you very much to all those who joined us tonight. And um, I know um, there's probably a lot more questions. I wish I had time to answer them, but please, um, I actually have a, um, an Instagram page called A oh, Universe okay. of Science uh, or Dromeda Sam. I, I can write that up there. Dromeda, okay, yeah, please. Uh, Dromeda, just that Dromeda Sam, if you look for me there, or um, that's my IG site. So please. Um, uh, or a universe of science, uh, I'll just write that, of uh, science. Uh, I, so I do keep a couple of um, um, uh, Instagram pages, which uh, generally I put uh, updates there. And I also, uh, uh, please, please, please do keep in touch with me. I'm very happy to uh, help anybody I can. But I just wanted to finish up by saying this: our knowledge of the universe is like a piece of paper on its side, okay? That's that's what we know about the universe, but that's what's there, okay? So wow. the idea is that all those young people out there, and especially the ones that love this sort of thing, go out there and do some exploration and keep your dreams alive because it's very important because sometimes those dreams can really turn out to be extraordinary outcomes, as I said earlier in the show, and uh, I just hope that everybody can find that wonderful fascination that I've enjoyed for so many years. Thank you very much, Captain Fies. It's been a pleasure. Yes, that is, is that correct, the IG there? Uh, uh, IG um, uh, at Dromeda Sam. I think that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yes, Dromeda that's the Sam. one. Oh, okay, Dromeda Sam. All right, right. So everyone, uh, I, I, from, from, from us, uh, thank, like you thank you all. Thank you for having us, and we look forward to the next session, and uh, good night from me and Sam. Good all right. night.